Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Tom Hesser Dealerships, is on my TV WQMY. Welcome inside the brand new Wilkes-Barre Area Stadium. We're in Plains, Luzerne County. Tonight, it's a conference crossover contest between Wall and Paul Pack from the Lackawanna Football Conference and Wilkes-Barre Area from the Wyoming Valley Conference. A pleasant good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Ide, and welcome to the third week of high school football here on my TV WQMY. And a beautiful night in northeastern awesome. sense of Pennsylvania. And joining me, as he always does, former <laughs> Tunkanic area coach John Sechak. Amanda Bob. Cool will join us from the sidelines shortly. And boy, no one's happier to be here tonight than the Wilkes-Barre area Wolfpack team. Wow. For the last two years, they've had to play all their home games on the road, but finally, they have a home to call their own. And what a home it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. You guys will see shots of this later on. They got an eight lane track and coaching wise for two years in a row to be able to say, oh yeah, we're gonna play at uh, Wyoming Valley West. It's tough to motivate kids to do that. Amanda will talk to the superintendent and have more on the stadium uh, a little bit later on in tonight's game. So let's talk about the game. Wall and Paul Pack comes in one one. They picked up their first win in the first week of the season. They have a very experienced line, but young skill people. And one of those is our Allied Services Spotlight player, Dylan Pedrazzle. Dylan Pedrazzle, first year quarterback, has rushed for 109 yards, two touchdowns on 39 carries. Uh, and he's thrown the ball, or excuse me, he's had two receptions for 29 yards. So he's learning, there's growing pains going on, and Doc Watson is really patient with all his skill kids. The Wolfpack, meanwhile, picked up their first win of the year last week against Abington. They're young as well, and one guy we don't talk a lot about, but I think he's a superstar in the making, is our other Allied Services Spotlight player, Makai Nelson. Makai Nelson, number three, the junior running back. He's got over 300 yards, and the key to that, though, is he's rushed for 53 times this year, which is a boatload. Two touchdowns, he's got two receptions, 29 yards also, but he also has a touchdown, and he's a great defensive back player. Because you're retired right now, he, lot, he watches a lot of game <laughs> film, and he came up with some keys to the game. So I let's did. give our Tom Hester keys to the game first for the Buckhorns. The Buckhorns, Doc Watson wants to make sure that they capitalize on turnovers. He really wants to get rid of the mental mistakes that they've had all season. It's been a short season, but he's been frustrated with that. Let's go for uh, Wilkes-Barre area. Well, number one, Coach Sinti said he's got to fight the emotions of being the first time on the home field, keep them in check. He wants to win the turnover battle, and he wants to really take advantage of all the opportunities that the Buckhorns present to them. It's going to be a spectacular night here in Plains, the opening of the brand new Wilkes-Barre area stadium. It's the Wolfpack and the Buckhorns. Next. You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Tom Hesser Dealerships on my TV WQMY. Oh, there's excitement in the air here at the new Wolfpack Stadium in Plains, Luzerne County. Their Wilkes-Barre area team finally has a home, and we've talked about it all night long. And give us more information now. Let's go down to Amanda as we get ready for kickoff. That's right, Bob. You said it best. They are so excited to finally have a home. High school football hasn't been played here in Plains since 1993. The last game at Plains Memorial Stadium was when Coughlin hosted Berwick. It's a beautiful night for high school football, a beautiful new facility, and we're going to talk with Superintendent Dr. Brian Costello later on in the game to learn more about this facility and the additions that are still coming. Well, I don't know about you, Coach, but uh, I got adrenaline going. We are ready for kickoff. Wilkes-Barre will receive after Wall and Paul Pack won the toss. <laughs> Beautiful facility here down at Wilkes-Barre. I'll tell you what, Bob, you said it best. Electricity is flowing and a beautiful sunset. We're ready to roll. And what you're going to see, and you can't see it now because it's not dark enough, but these lights change different colors. So every time Wilkes-Barre scores, we're going to see a light show. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. We hope they score all night long. Brady Reynolds has it teed up for the Buckhorns. Got three receivers back. Goodwin, Nelson. And uh, number two is uh, a Serrano, and it's Underway here at the new Wilkes-Barre Stadium. Acerano brings it down, and the Wolfpack will have the ball just outside their 20-yard line. Well, we have two new quarterbacks for each team. We'll talk about the freshman, Jack Howell, Jake Howell, excuse me. 
Not great numbers, but he's doing what Cyril Sinti wants to do and it's brought to you by Allied Services. Again, this young man, it's a first year quarterback for him and they're gonna be handing the ball off a lot to Makai Nelson back there. And again, if you look at his yard, it's only 96 yards. They don't pass a lot. Again, he has two touchdowns, but he also has two interceptions. Well, Paul Pack gave up some big numbers last week against Hazleton area. And Wooksbury likes to run the ball. As we saw last week, they ran for 294 yards. Howell comes out throwing. We're gonna go long, and the first play at the new Wolfpack Stadium goes incomplete, trying to hit Johnson down the middle. Well, they lined up in a power eye formation back here. So again, you really thought they were gonna come out. Again, nice deception right there. Let's go downtown. And again, good coverage there by the Buckhorns. No huddle offense for this Wolfpack team, coming off a 21-14 win over the Comets a week ago. First handoff to Nelson, and he's up for a couple at best. And now let's take a look at the offense for the Wolfpack, coming in averaging 262 yards. How Nelson and Shiner will be in the backfield. The receivers are very good. Goodwin on the outside has two catches, Johnson as well as three. And the line, you know, they're young, but they are big coach, and oh. they're getting more and more experience. You see Grzeszewski, Grzeszewski in the middle running at center. He's just a sophomore. Again, they average 277 pounds across the board. Uh, but while at Paul Pack's three-man front, <laughs> they're pretty stout, 298 average. Quick out, and Nelson's going to throw it to a wide-open Johnson on a trick play. Johnson inside Buckhorn territory. He is a beast to take down. He's on his feet. And he goes in for the first ever Wolfpack touchdown. 75 yards. At 192 pounds, coach, he is one tough kid to take to the ground. Nice, a nice little trick play to set up. You know, that halfback option pass, boom. He's open, but number three was right there. Number eight, nice pursuit. And right there, it just reminded me last night of the Buffalo Bills quarterback, get out of my way. Just slapped him down. Mason Clark couldn't get him down. The extra point from Corcoran is up and good. So a three play drive and the Wolfpack are on the board here at the brand new stadium and you couldn't ask for a better start. Here we go from behind. Look at this great camera work. Nice pass, swing pass out and it's, and it's downtown and there he goes. Look at this, great job. Again, Doc Watson, one thing he emphasized to me before the game was their secondary is really banged up. They bro have a broken collarbone and the other corner just this week or last week broke his finger. So they're really, really inexperienced back there. And, and they really got torched last week by a very good Hazleton area team. We'll see them later on in the year. Tyler Wolf threw for 278 yards. And obviously Cyril Sinti, Nino Sinti, the offensive coordinator, saw that in the film and that's why we see more throwing. Absolutely, when, when teams or uh, coaches are scouting their opponents they're going to try to find that weakness and exploit it and boy did they come out with a trick play and they really did they really were trying to establish that pass even on the first play so there you see who's back set three C for Wallen Paw Pack and teeing it up will be Corcoran number 31 and ready to kick this one off to the Buckhorns trying to get their first series underway. High kick from the one, it's Pedrazzle. And Pedrazzle is up, we have a flag come in, our first flag of the night. Earl Harris is our referee, just past the 17 yard line. Wabing Valley Conference crew Going to make our first call of the game. They see legal block in the back, and this will back up the Buckhorns even more. That's going to really put a test on their brand new quarterback, Drew Kiesendahl. More of a running back, but Coach Watson likes what he sees. He's just a sophomore. They will not throw the ball a lot either, and we'll take a look at uh, Drew in just a second. So this is gonna back them up all the way to the six. Stop. 
So this team averages 161 yards per game. They had a nice nice job against Honesdale. They put up 132 yards on the ground in the first year. So it's a power eye. And the big line gets a little bit of a push. As looks like Max Krager had the tackle. There is Kiesendahl. Not big numbers, but efficient numbers. He was basically thrown into the fire as quarterback. He really was. And the sophomore is 5'10", 180 pounds. And if you look, his completion rates and his yards, uh, the thing that's going to stand out the most is the INTs. This is where both these quarterbacks are so young. There's so many growing pains. There are going to be uh, mistakes made. And the coaches know that, and they just have to be patient with them. But Jazz again has a hole. Brought down by Shiner. It will be third down and about six for the Buckhorns. They break out of that power eye. They just put their power back, full back up on the left-hand side. And Pedrazzo's a tough runner, but boy, look at that nice hit by number 32 there. Gannon Redding coming flying in there and laying the wood. And big Ian Bednar got, oh. you saw, grabbed his legs. He's 280-pound <laughs> senior. So here's a chance for the Wolfpack now to Get the ball back in good field position. Well, Paul Pack, just a 4A school. Wilkesbury a 6A. Only their second meeting all time. Wilkesbury won the first game. Pedrazzle has it, and he's up near the 20. And that's a perfect storm. Renovations first down for Wall and Paul Pack. Well, the edge right now, I mean, with the offensive line, Paul Pack, here you go. They just come in here, they just overlap. Number 53, Jacob Gonzalez, comes to kick out from his left guard, and Pedrazzo, he cuts back. What I started to say was they're averaging, Paul Pack is averaging 272 pounds across their offensive line, where the uh, Wilkes-Barre's defense, the Wolfpack's only 236. So if they can establish that line of scrimmage with their size, they should be able to dominate that defensive line and take, take care of business. But Drazzle's going to do a halfback pass, and he just overthrows it, trying to hit Pazenti, the sophomore. One trick play works, the other did not. Let's take a look at now at the Tom Esser starters for uh, Wall and Paul Pack. We saw Kiesendahl and Pedrazzle. Pearson is the fullback when they do have a fullback in there. Uh, Holbert, Pazenti, and Santiago, uh, good receivers, but again, they don't throw that much. And here's the big line. This is their experience up front. Uh, Two seniors, three juniors, four came back, one left, so they have a new right tackle. But other than that, you mentioned the size. They are. They're just huge. I mean, 272-pound average across for a high school, that's big. And they're going to just, like I said, if they settle in, they should start having their way. Bedrazzle, nice cutback. No flag for a face mask. He's up to the 30, and it's another perfect storm renovations first down. All they do is they just go with that outside zone, and he cuts back up inside. The one thing, uh, we've only seen Pedrazzle now three times run the ball. He really knows how to cut back really quick. What they need to do for the Buckhorns is cut down on the penalty. Sometimes the offensive line moves, wrong count. But once you, I think once you establish that front five, they'll be able to it's, run. It's getting in sync, and it's game three now. Uh, so the first week jitters are gone. That improvement should have been there last week. But now these guys pretty much have gelled, and they should be able to take care of it. They'll stay on the ground. Good wrap-up from number 32 who shoots in. Uh, Gannon Redding as Mark Nilsson. You'll see Mark Fitzgerald. Great job with this instant replay. Great camera work right there, number 68. You know, you have 295 pounds coming at you. He's going to put a hurt on you at that point. Again, Pedrazzle's being patient back there and really finding the spots to run the ball. Redding, uh, a senior, 21 total tackles coming in, three for a, a loss and three sacks. So he's one of the more active linebackers we'll see. RPO, Kiesendahl keeps it. It's going to be close to another perfect storm renovations first down. I think they'll move the chains. Now let's take a look at the defense for the Wolfpack tonight. They mentioned that 4-4 defense. Up front, Bednar, they're big. And the linebackers are very active. We mentioned 
Redding all, already, and Johnson in the middle, 14 total tackles in the secondary with Nelson out there, Robinson and Goodwin, very athletic. And fast. We know Mackay Nelson's got breakaway speed out there. He's been like the best kept secret in uh, Wyoming Valley. So Paul Pack establishing that ground game they need and picked up three first downs after starting on the six. First pass is caught by the fullback Pearson. Good gain of four. Really like that. They come back with the, here we go. Yep. They're coming back in here with a bootleg action. Again, to establish the fullback, Pearson, who again, you haven't heard him, we haven't mentioned him at all. Again, because we know is gonna get a majority of the carries. That's really a nice, well-designed play. I remember the old wall Paul Pack coach and our colleague of ours, Stan yep. Kaharski, always said, when you start on the six, it is tough for a high school team to go 90 plus yards, but already wall Paul Packs flipped the field by just getting some first downs and scoring up third down now. And we say that every week, Bob. It's like, what do you have to do? All you have to do is just get a first down and just keep that going. And they're starting to establish right now, and you'll see this. They're getting what they need from their offensive line, and their running backs are doing a great job hitting and spinning. Goodwin made the tackle for the Wolfpack. This is exactly what Paul Pack wants to do. Slow the game down, control the time of possession, and establish that run. Pedrazzo again has a nice hole. He shoots through, and he's going to be close, and he's going to be inside Wolfpack territory. Another perfect storm. Renovations first down. You'll see they run just that little power in there with that power eye inside. And again, they're getting pad on pad, man on man, or what we like to call Bob, big on big. And they get in there and they're just giving that Pedrazzo room to run. Hey. And Bob, you said it. They're doing a great job establishing a run game to slow it down. His sixth carry already on this drive. Again, a little bit of a gap tripped up in the middle. I think it was Redding who came in, maybe tripped him up. Short game. And we got uh, Pedrazzles going out, and uh, Mark Nilsson is coming in for his replacement. So I would expect maybe let's try that. No, let's go with another bootleg maybe to the fullback. Well, last week, Wilkes-Barre's defense was susceptible to the pass. Abington couldn't do any running. They only gained five yards on the ground, but they did throw for 186 already. Wall Paul Pack's well beyond the five yards they gave up last week, did the Wolfpack. Nilsson, just a little gap. Good hit by Shiner. Well, I know talking to Coach Michaels, the defensive coordinator for the Wolfpack, he was concerned about the size of their offensive line. And I, I think right now it's coming to fruition what he was worried about, that they're getting pushed around on the first level, and now they're starting to expand to the second. So he's going to just have to tell the kids, buckle up and start just playing your gaps and your responsibilities. There you saw Dr. Mark Watson's 17th season here, uh, should say with Wall and Paul Pack. We are Wall and Paul Pack last year, not this year. He's an all out into the flat, and he can't hit Nilsson. So now decision for Wall Paul Pack and Coach Watson. Does he punt or maybe try to pick up a first down? They go from that broken power eye. They put them out there, and again, just, uh, just a little bit out of reach. And again, you're going to have these growing pains. They're not going to have that sink right now because, again, first-year quarterback. So they will punt. Johnson back to receive the punt from Reynolds. Oh, high snap. Good catch. That's Deck Gannon Decker who's doing the kicking. But we have a fumble, and it looks like Johnson comes back up for it. So two mistakes, one by each team, and it goes for naught as Wilkesbury now will have the ball back. Now it's Here we go. You'll see. He's again. Johnson on that was just looking downfield, 
instead of just concentrating on the ball. That's one of the mistakes that young returners always do. They're, they see the opponent coming at them and they just forget their technique. So Decker with a nice catch, a nice kick. Now it's up to the Paw Pack defense to hold Booksbury now after they flip the field. So it was a 13 play drive for Wall and Paw Pack, and it, but then they kind of stalled out. Wolf Pack, second possession, and we are going to have legal substitution. First penalty for the Wolf Pack tonight, backs them up five. Good job by the fullback shooting in there. Shiner, who had 59 yards on 14 carries against Scranton, he gets a lot of that back. He gained a nine. They go with that fake toss, and it's just an inside trap. Nice job by the offensive line there. Gilbert Gonzalez coming up on that inside, that real quick trap inside. So Shiner's the up back. We have a flag come in. As Shock makes the tackle for Wall of Paul Pack. This may be going against the Wolf Pack. Earl Harris gonna make the call now. Six men on the line of scrimmage. So second penalty on this drive for uh, Wooksbury. Makes it second and long now. Well, one of the keys to the game for Coach Sinti was to try to take advantage of opportunities. And right now, they're, they're stopping themselves. And they've got to stop like these silly mistakes. That's what coaches, we would call those silly mistakes right now that are costing them. How gonna roll out and completion to yep. number seven. Hits McClary, who dives forward, brings up a third and manageable now. That's completion number seven to Ron McClary. I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the quarterback, they'll roll him out to take away the pressure. And again, they've got that big young man in there, Sam, Sam Phillips, 365 pounds. <laughs> so if we get him away from him, He's not going to be able to catch. If he does catch him, boy, we're in trouble. We're seeing a good one. So Nelson back. He cuts through. He's up for a perfect storm renovations first down for Wilkesbury after two penalties. They gain about 15 yards. Ball at the 40 now. On this replay, you'll see they just ran with a power. Again, number 53, Gilbert Gonzalez is pulling from his left guard, and Nelson does a nice job. Being patient. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, okay, we'll come back to that. Quick pitch to Nelson. Comes up through for five more. So they're going quick and again, shock on the tackle. What I was saying about how patient he is. Look, he gets the toss. And look, he's not full speed. He's going downhill. He's waiting, makes a nice cutback, and he just gains six yards. I mean, he's going to be a really good one here for the Wolfpack. Comes right out, Shiner now, the single back. And he's caught in the backfield. Good job by the Paul Pack defense. Looked like number 13 went in there. Ethan Moses from his safety position, maybe a yard at best. And you'll see that they went with a broken power eye this time. And again, it's interesting how they're like taking a page out of each other's playbook. The halfback passes, now they're doing so, a little something a little bit different that we haven't seen. Well, when they need the yards, Wilkesbury puts Nelson back in. Oh, absolutely. So uh, you expect number three to get the ball. 216 yards last week. You mentioned what? 43. Uh, 40, 40, 40 carries, something yeah. like that? <laughs> yeah, 43 carries yeah. last week, Bob. That's, I mean, that's a workload of runs for him. And that wasn't, now, that wasn't a running back the whole time. He also did a little bit more than that. So the first quarter is in the books here in Wilkesbury. Oh, wait, time out. Thirteen seconds left. I'm surprised Wilkesbury called a timeout. 
I didn't see the, what the play clock was out. I, I kind of jumped the gun. <laughs> We're just hoping to see the uh, Pink Floyd light show going on here when they score. So seven nothing Wilkes-Barre, and, and you know, so far it's been pretty even. All Paul Packs started their only possession of the quarter, and the possessions, we're gonna talk about that, are gonna to be tough tonight because both teams wanna run the ball. And, and we have two evenly matched teams. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both coming in one-on-one. -on -one. They're both running teams. Um, and again, they have. it's gonna take time for them to develop those passing games. So beautiful sunset over the horizon here at the new Wolfpack Stadium. And the mountains behind us and in front of us, a, a really a nice, nice look for here. What you can see the new brand new school, which we had the basketball game there last year. And you know, um, finally, it's been talked about for a long time, but things are coming to fruition here in Wilkes-Barre. It's a beautiful venue and the stands for the Wolfpack are pretty full. Oh, great job stopping Nelson short. Antonio Ionetta shoots in. The senior stops him short, brings up fourth down, and that should run out the clock. The quarter is in the books. First quarter here is when we return. Wilkesbury will have to punt on fourth down. Second quarter is on the way. It's Wolfpack seven, Buckhorns nothing. Welcome back. Wilkes-Barre area leads well in Paul Pack 7-0 after the first quarter. Coming up now, we're going to show you a little video that Fox is doing with NEPA Builders about raising the roof. This season, NEPA Builders is trying to find a family to give a, a roof to. Let's check in with Toby now, who has more on raising the roof. I'm Toby Grizenda, owner of NEPA Builders. I am proud to tell you about the Raising the Roof project. Raising the Roof is a partnership of NEPA Builders, 84 Lumber, and Fox 56 to replace a roof for a local family in need. We are excited to give back to the local families who need a helping hand. And we are reaching out to you, the people of Northeast PA, to send in nominations for a family that you feel could use a helping hand right now. Go to NEPABLDRS.com to nominate someone today. Join us in building a better Northeast. Back on the field, Wilkes-Barre punted while Paul Pack has the ball as we begin the second quarter with Bob Ide and Jan Sechak. You just saw Amanda. The Buckhorns have it at their own 35, trailing seven to nothing. They go back to the ground and look like Nilsson has the carry, but Wilkes-Barre's right there, the fall on him, uh, one yard. So nice job by uh, Wall and Paul Pack to make the stop on Nelson to get the ball back. Correct. They really did. And to have that long drive that started their six stop, you know, midfield, uh, you know, I, hats off to them. They're really going to be in for a fight tonight. 2 6 a schools in a row for Wall and Paul Pack. Keys and all out there makes a nice throw. Great catch out there by Holbert, his third catch on the year, a gain of eight. Brought down by Nelson. Again, they just go with a max protection on that. And again, a quick out by number 17, hauls it in and goes right out of bounds. Even when you, I talk to Doc and you, you talk to Coach Watson, he'll tell you, Kizanel's not a quarterback. He wasn't a quarterback, no. he's never played quarterback. <laughs> but he was their best option. He felt, he felt like he knew what he, the game, he could trust them. He, he's still developing, as you can see, uh, the pass and, and the feel of the game. It is, and your quarterback should be your best athlete, and that's what Doc Watson said. We put our best athlete at the quarterback spot. And again, nice tough running in there by Mark Nilsson. Gregor stops him short, so the punt team coming on now for Wall and Paul Pack. Greg, I love these end view shots, because it really shows you the offensive line and defensive line battling it out. And again, we always talk about leverage and pad level. So again, that, when you guys can see that in the end zone, you'll be able to tell who's winning the battle by who has the lower pads. Decker back to punt, averages 25 yards per punt. Better snap this time. Johnson back low lining. 
Johnson will catch it on the run for the 35. And the big junior finally is taken down around the 40-yard line. I'll tell you what, he he looks like a man amongst boys out there. He's just the guy. I mean, he's the dude for them. He's getting it done. He's a tough runner. And, and it took, what, four Paul Pack buckhorns to take him down. So Walla Paul Pack, excuse me, Wilkes-Barre this year in the uh, new Division One for Wyoming Valley Conference. Uh, as they go to two divisions this mm -hmm. year. Sign up a big school, small school for, for the most part. So they'll play the usuals, Dallas and, and Valley West and, and whatnot. Well, I know Doc Watson really, he wasn't promoting the fact, but he was, that he probably has the toughest schedule in the conference because he's playing all, he has six schools that are over his size. It's caught out there by McClary, but great defense by Wall and Paul Pack. Nice job, look, just a flare number seven out, do a nice job, again, great job wrapping them up out there, and again, nice support there by number 36 for Paul Pack. Santiago was first on, on the spot, the junior. He made the tackle and a loss of one. How did the air again? And it's gonna be short. I think that ball got tipped at the line. And Wilkes-Barre gonna go a little fast-paced. And again, now they're trying to air it out a little bit. Right, yeah. yep. Good call, coach. Well, I think that was Ian, uh, not, um, Jake LaBelle. I think that's who that was, I'm not sure. So, third and long now, about 11. Howell gonna roll. And it, in and out of the hands. It looked like McClary had it and he dropped it. So now Wolfpack kind of stalled out and while Paul Pack will get the ball. So we'll look again, now they're gonna be putting the quarterback out, rolling him to his right. Yeah, he had that ball. It looked like, again, it was a little bit down and low and he was going forward. The ball was behind him and he just he just couldn't get it. If you're if you're a coach and you watch film and you see what Hazleton did to Wall and Paul Pack, last week, putting up 278 yards to the air. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> Wall of Paul Pack, great rush. They pick up the fumble. And a great job by the Buckhorn special teams. Ionetta pulls in the fumble, and Wall of Paul Pack's in business at the Wolfpack 20. Watch, yard watch line. what he does with the ball. He puts the ball behind his back. <laughs> that is a great trick move, but again, heads up play by number 44 there. Ionetta, great job. Talk about momentum swing right now. Up, oh, we got a flag. I think that was the ball being thrown in. I didn't see a flag. So the ball is oh, at the 13-yard okay. line. So Wall Paul Pack, for the first time tonight, is in the Allied Services red zone at the Wolfpack 13. A chance to tie this one up off the fumble. Little RPO, Nelson tries to get to the outside, and he's inside the 10 to the nine. Well, they opened up in that, in a split back shotgun, they motion him out. Now they got it unbalanced to that side, an extra man. And again, Nielsen trying to get to the outside. I don't think he's gonna have much success trying to beat those guys to the outside because of the sheer speed those cornerbacks uh, have for Wilkes-Barre. We haven't seen Pedrazzle in a while. Nielsen's been in there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that on the sidelines. He was, Pedrazzle was running very well. Nielsen again, nowhere to go. Puts his head down and falls forward. Gain of one, bring us up third down. Here we go, you'll see 68. He just does what they call a pin and pull right there method, trying to clear it out. There was a hole there. Again, Nilsson's getting really tough yards in there and it brings up that third and five. Doc Watson taking his time here, making sure that the right place called with plenty of time left on the clock. 
So a big third down. Quarterback keep. Kiesendahl to the five. Going to be about three yards short. So let's see what the Buckhorns want to do. Again, this was a design play. Again, number 24 did a nice job with the stalemate. But again, the defender that came in kind of blew that play up and forced the quarterback back inside. Martucci, you saw hitting one of the Wolfpack. He went flying. So this will be Reynolds, the place kicker. Late arriving teammate. 10 seconds on the play clock. And we're going to have, a I think, a timeout from Coach Watson. Smart call right there, just so that they make sure that they had all their men on the field. Obviously, number 24, as you see on your screen, is going to be new to that wing position. And you saw a coach telling them to punch down with your inside arm and foot. And again, don't worry about anything on the outside. I don't see uh, 26 anywhere on the bench sitting. It's hard to tell with my binoculars, but Dylan Pedrazzo has not been in for a couple of series now, and he was their leading rusher coming in and had eight carries on that first drive. And that leads me to believe that Pedrazzo probably is at that left wing spot, so now they had to substitute somebody in for him. Well, we'll take a look at that and we'll see how that plays out throughout the game. Yep. yep. That was Anthony Martucci's the one that's going to that left wing position, number 24. So a little change of heart here from Coach Watson. He's going to go for it on fourth down and three. Sends the kicker, has the kicker stay on the sidelines. So in fourth and three, they're going to reverse it. They're going to reverse it to Pazenti. Pazenti going to dive, and I don't know if he's going to make it. He had to go really far as a Wolfpack player had him push back. And I think they're going to be short of a first down. Wow. I like the call. You know, go for it. Fake the ISO. Reverse. 19 coming around. But look at number eight. Johnson. We've talked about Johnson already. He's, the, he's being a stud on both sides of the ball for the Wolfpack right now. I think he's about a yard, two yards short. So Wilkesbury on downs takes over. That's a tough call. I guess you go, you want to play aggressive. You want to be aggressive. You want to give your kids confidence. And I, I like the call. I really do. But again, they didn't account for number eight out there, Nikwan Johnson. Uh, you know, nobody picked him up. Wilkesbury now from their own four, backed up. Gives it off to Nelson, and Paul Pack's there. Good stop by Ionetta, who comes in number 44. Do a nice job. Watch this outside pressure right there. Right there, force the cutback. Who is that, number 83, I believe? Does a nice job with that. Yeah, George Rafferty does a real nice job for Wall and Paul Pack. No, uh, no gain on that one, so let's try the pitch. If he gets outside, I don't know if you're gonna catch him. With a stiff arm, Nelson down the sidelines with the speed. Can Clark catch him? He cannot. It's a whoops bear area touchdown for Makai Nelson, 96 yards. Wow. I just said it. If you, he gets outside, you won't get him. It. You said that, Bob. That was amazing. Again, I thought, well, they're not going to go back to Rafferty's side, but they went in there. He must have gotten blocked down or maybe stunned inside because there was, it just opened up. The floodgates opened up, and he just, Makai hit that boy. <laughs> get him some oxygen, folks. He, he really earned it on that one. His longest run of the year, and I'd have to say mo maybe his career. Corcoran in for the extra point. It is up and good. And Wolfsbury ups their lead now. 14-0 over Wallapaw Pack. 
What a run from number that. three. Look at how he just opened up and he just goes. Welcome back to Wolfpack Stadium, where Wilkes-Barre area leads Wall and Paul Pack 14-0. Joining me now is Dr. Brian Costello, the Wilkes-Barre Area School District Superintendent. Dr. Costello, thank you so much for having us tonight. An incredible atmosphere here. What does the stadium and this school mean to this community? Well, I think it's been a long time coming. Anytime we could utilize a venue like this to bring the community thank together you, is a win for everyone. I know the football team started playing together before the three schools merged. How has athletics really helped the school Evan coming Kirkman. together? Yeah, I mean, it's the truth. The athletics led the way of our merger. They really got out in front of it. The students led the way to get our three schools together as one. And this is a perfect way to pay them off by having this wonderful athletic field for them. And it's not just a, it's not just a field for athletics, but it's also an extension of the classroom. And I think that's important for everyone to understand and this beautiful facility. Can you talk about some of the things that are really cool here? I know we just saw the light show when they scored, but what are some of the other features that the stadium has? This stadium is an eight lane track. Um, we will have the ability to have Wi-Fi throughout the stadium. The sound system's fantastic. If you've been on the other side, it sounds very good. And we'll be moving I'm forward in the future to have two additional uh, fields, uh, there'll be turf fields, and the uh, whole idea yeah, of this stadium is to have a campus setting so that when students are completed with class, they'll be able to come right after school and be able to participate in their athletic career. And we know it's not completely done yet. You have some field, the field house going up behind you. When should that project be complete and when can they expect to be in there? Yeah, we anticipate the field house to be completed by the end of probably the spring sports season. So by next year at this time, the field house will be complete and then the two other athletic fields will begin. And you have to be just ecstatic with tonight's turnout? Oh, it's a great turnout. Anytime the community comes and supports the district like this community, uh, it just, it really team. is a win for the whole district and the community as a whole. It is. Thank Dr. Costello, thank you so much. Bob, back to you. Yeah, I don't know much more we can add to that but it's just a beautiful facility <laughs> really we're is. happy to be here we're going to be here in the future and we're you know we're extremely proud that we could bring you the first football game here they did play soccer the other night on the field you see wall and paul pack doing good things coach first a great kickoff return from pazenti then pazenti had a touchdown in his hands and, it and just dropped it <laughs> and that video just right there just summed it up the frustration that he has Okay, timeout on the field for Paul Pack. Still 14-0, 5.36 left in the first half. We are back at Wilkes-Barre Area Stadium. Third and long facing wall. Paul Pack, here's the pressure on Kiesendahl. And he's sacked behind the line of scrimmage. Shiner takes him down all the way back in the 40. We also have a flag down. Well, Coach Michaels, defense coordinator, dialed up a great blitz on that one, brought so much pressure, he had nowhere to go. We're going to call from Earl Harris right now. So you saw the hold will probably be declined, fourth down, as Shiner took him down for his first sack on the year. Just the outside pressure, inside pressure, nice job. Again, relentless pursuit by the Wolfpack right there. Coach Michaels is really probably smiling, <laughs> a rarity on the sideline right now, because that was a great job by his defense. You think re Coach Watson regrets now not kicking that field goal? No. I mean, you, you, uh, I mean as a coach, what do you say when you're on the sidelines? You, you made the call, didn't go your way, you give up a touchdown. What are you thinking? Well, you couldn't predict that they would score, but you're not going to regret or have second doubts about it because, again, he saw something or his staff up top saw something and said, let's go for it. So you see Doc Watson right there. He's trying to figure something out right now. So a timeout on the field for Wall and Paul Pack gives us a chance now to find out who's smiling tonight on the Wilkes-Barre <laughs> sidelines, Amanda. That's right, Bob, and tonight's first smile cam brought to you by Dr. Todd is the Wilkes-Barre Area Wolfpack Cheerleaders, and they have a lot to cheer about tonight. Let's go! Dr. 
Dr. Todd smile cam. And of course, 14 nothing to score five minutes before the half. Coach, uh, kind of, how would you assess the game so far? Well, I'll tell you, I, I really like what both teams are doing. They're trying to establish the run, but they're opening up the passing game, and we're seeing that. And right now, the Wolfpack is taking advantage of the weakness of the Paul Pack Buckhorn secondary. So uh, it, it's what I imagined that we were going to see tonight. There was, there's no one really stepping up, or I shouldn't say that. Makai Nelson is stepping up. Don't get me wrong, folks. But there's no one. It's not, it's not being dominated by one team yet. So in fourth down, Paul Pack's going to roll the dice. There's a flag down. They're going to send it long. It's going to be almost caught. It goes incomplete. Nilsson out there, number eight. But let's see what the flag is. So Doc Watson going for two fourth downs here in the second quarter. The first one he didn't make. This one's still up in the air. There has been, I, I, I don't recall the high school coach, he never punts. He, he, <laughs> oh, he's there never, is one. I, yeah, there, I don't know where there it actually is. Yeah. is. And he never punted, and I think the percentages actually were in his favor. Mm -hmm. So Earl Harris, oh, Earl Harris, excuse me, is going to wave the flag off, and you're right, the percentages are. So you, you make it more than you, you, you don't. On this one, while Paul Pack did not, they tried a deep pass. And again, you'll just see the balls wobbling, just not good mechanics at this point. Again, you're trying to convert a running back to a quarterback, and it's just going to be uh, growing pains, which are painful at the times, and that was one of them. So the Wolfpack averaged 21 points per game back on the field. While Paul Pack this year giving up 29 points per game, most of that was in last week's loss to Hazleton, 45-7. to So it's up to the Wall Paul Pack defense to... Nelson in control, and they do on that first series. Nice tackle by Shock in there, the sophomore. Well, Coach Sinti must really, he sees something that they keep attacking. They go into their left side, attacking the right side of Wall and Paul Pack. Nice job in there, like you said, by the linebacker scraping in there, Shock, and doing a nice job dropping them for a short gain. So Nelson on that long run, obviously over 100 yards tonight. He had 216 last week. They'll fake it, play action, and have Johnson open with another big catch. Johnson still at his feet. All the way to the Wall and Paul Pack 23 yard line. Nice play action in here. And again, we talk about yaks or yard after the catch. Look at this, Johnson hauls it in. 5, 10, 15. Keeps his balance for another 8 yards. It's a 33-yard gain for Wilkesbury. So number 8 already has a big carry tonight. He had that first touchdown of the game. 75 yards through the year. That was from Nelson. Junior weaves through. They're trying to grab the ball out. They can't get it. Couple yards for number three. It's a tough week for Wilkesbury with the rain. They, their practice field, as we take a look at it again, at Solomon play, yep. was underwater. <laughs> they had to go to GAR. Then they couldn't get GAR. Then finally they got on the field here last night. So hopefully, it, when this complex is complete, it will work in Cyril Sinti's favor. <laughs> right? For, well, I'll tell you what, as a coach, two years having to uh, go over those obstacles is really difficult, but he's always been a profession about it. Nelson sheds a tackle, two tackles, and he's in for another Wilkes-Barre area touchdown, this time a 23-yard run. Here's the light show. Nice job, look at this, he goes cut back. Play action, was he was going to the right, cuts back left, and again, he's a man on a mission. Again, he's been a quiet secret here for Wilkes-Barre, but now, you know what, the secret's out. Teams from now on are gonna have to key on him and Johnson to take the, to keep the Wolfpack in check, take those two players out. 
I, I, it's going to be a tall task. I, I was talking to one of the coaches before the game. We talking about Nelson. I said, you, you don't hear from him a lot. You don't. You know, he's not one of those guys we. You know, we talk about a lot. He puts up big numbers. He says he's still raw. He's still learning. <laughs> and Coach Sidney says he's gone to all these camps. That's why he's offered by UConn. That's why he's being looked at. There you see him big. by big schools because he still has a lot to learn, and he's got that raw athleticism. And, again, being so, uh, being a junior and starting to figure it out a little bit, Bob, I mean, that's huge as a junior to be offered by UConn or any school at this point. But, I mean, that means they see something in this young man and if he keeps his grades and he does well in the SATs, he's going to have a bright future. So there you see the returners for Wall and Paul Pack. And uh, excuse me, Pazenti had a nice return when we had an interview with the superintendent. Now, obviously, we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, Dylan Pedraza, we haven't seen him since the first series. Not sure. Uh, obviously, he might be hurt. So Nielsen is the running is the running back. He's just a sophomore. Again, another injury for the Paul Pack, and depth comes into play, which is tough in high school. It really is. I mean, we'd like to say you have to have the next man up mentality, but sometimes that next man just doesn't have what it takes at this point. They're working. They're a work in progress. So, but again, he's gaining really valuable experience. This one's gonna be stopped. I think we had an offsides or some movement on the wall Paul Pack line. So explain that. You have you have the guys lined up at the 50, the kickers on the 40. Somebody moved forward for Wall Paul Pack. Well, again, that it, comes down to a blocking assignment, and you have to wait till the ball is kicked. Uh, obviously, he, I didn't see the infraction. So this will give five more yards. Well, you really yep. can't see it. Was number, it was actually number three for, for Wall and Paul Pack, who, who moved forward on the kickoff green. He's just a junior. He, he moved a little bit forward from the inside that 10 yards. And that was the that's what the motion is for, the offsides. So Corcoran tees it up again. High, long kick. This one will go deep. And from his end zone, Pezzetti again. Actually, you catch it in the end zone of high school as a touchback. Yep. So that will bring the ball out and Wall and Paul Pack. Now, let's talk about the Buckhorns. What do they have to do to get back in this game? Well, at this point, we talked about the first downs. They're missing Pedrazzle right now because of that great running attack they have. So Doc's going to just have to try to keep it simple, especially if he has inexperienced players in there. Get a first down, and let's just keep building from there. Try to have that offensive line, that big offensive line, reestablish it to give them an edge. Well, Paul Pack coming in averaging just 11 points per game. They did put up 15 uh, on Honesdale in their first win. In the first game of the season, they won 15-13. Now they just have to go get back to uh, what they what they do best, and that's establish that line. It's 21 nothing under three to play here in the first half. He's not going to throw over the middle. And again, another drop pass, little mistakes. George Rafferty dropped it. Pazenti dropped the touchdown before. And I think that's youth. You're talking, you're looking at two sophomores. Again, growing pains in here. Great call with the uh, bootleg action right there. Look it in, look it in, look it in. He's looking in it, and he just never had control of the ball. And one of the keys to the game for Doc Watson was to limit their mistakes. And right now, their mistakes have been monumental obstacles for them to overcome. From the 20, Paul Pack on second down. Nelson not going anywhere. Stood up in, in the backfield, and that's the senior, Ian Bednar, number 78. 280 pound senior. Boy, I'll tell you, he's a, he's a big young man, and he's really being stout up front there, really causing problems for the offensive line of the Buckhorns. Let's talk about what these seniors on both sides have gone through. COVID, uh, oh. not playing, then playing in your league. For Wilkes-Barre, playing on the road constantly, uh, bus rides. And, you know, Bednar talked about that today in the Citizen's Voice. 
you know, he, he's weathered the storm. He just wanted to play football. And, you know, credit to the seniors. There's a flag comes in as Kizanol shoots through. Let's see if this one comes back. I mean, it probably is. The yeah, illegal shift. Motion. On, legal shift on Walla Paul Pack. Those give, are, give it credit to the seniors. I mean, they, they've they, gone through a lot. They really have. I mean, I just can't imagine what they went through to, with COVID. I mean, we talked about that, Bob, last year when it was great to be back and finally start calling games again with fans. And then, uh, you know, long bus rides. Every every game was a bus ride mm -hmm. for the Wilkes Bear Wolfpack. So, um, and the best part of it is all these young men, and and I know there's a few women out there that are kicking and playing. They just love the game, and it's a testament to their coaches and their schools that they're willing to c continue and pursue their dreams. Third along, back to the ground. And the sophomore comes through, will be short of a first down by nine yards. And we have another stoppage. Timeout Wilkes-Barre, they want to get the ball back. So the loss of uh, Pedrazzo looks like it's been affecting this wall Paul pack team. They go with the ISO play fullback leading up through. Again, nice yardage, but again, when you take five yards and you know make it that much more difficult to get that first, it, it's just frustration starting to set in on the Wall and Paul Pack players right now. Allied Services is holding a job fair September 14th and 17th. We are hiring for all positions and have generous sign-on bonuses. Allied Services is the region's leading provider of health care, and we want you to be fulfilled in your career. I think it's apropos. We have a full moon for the Wolfpack tonight to howl at. They're up 21-0. Here at the home of the Wilkes-Barre area Wolfpack, opening the stadium here. And their team up 21 to nothing over Wall and Paul Pack from the Lackawanna Football Conference. Low kick. Reynolds gets it off. Did he touch it? That's the, gonna be the question mark. Wilkesbury recovers it. Johnson has his head down. I'm not sure he touched it. Well, the way when he was and, doing that though, Bob, I don't mean I'm sorry. Yeah. I, he he touched it because he knew he did something bad. Bad snap again. This is like not good. This is fundamental football for the special teams. Decker, that was yeah. Decker kicking, by the way. Excuse me. They see Nielsen trying to get the ball, and he couldn't. There was a flag thrown, too. Dead ball. Okay, so two breaks for the Wolfpack. They get the ball back. Now they're going to get some yards put on with the unsportsmanlike. 15 yards tacked on at the end of the play. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't see it on the field. And I said just previous, just the play before it, frustration starting to set in with the players. Bob, you were saying uh, how beautiful it was in the full moon. I'm looking at the sunset over in the back mountain with that red, gl orange glow. It's absolutely gorgeous. Great night for Wilkes Bear football. So 124 left. A couple timeouts left for the Wolfpack, and they have the ball on their own 49 yard line. Already up 21 to nothing. The freshman looking down the middle. No, they had him again. This time it was Nelson who was coming across, and he just dropped the ball. Maybe it was a little bit short. I like that. They put him outside. Let's put him on one-on-one -on -one and see how he does. He does a great job breaking the zone. He just, again, ball was not really thrown perfect. Oh, well, Wilkes-Barre like to get some momentum. They, they're going to travel to Hazleton next week to face our number four ranked team in the uh, Friday Night Rivals top 10. Great defense by Paul Pack Santiago coming in, knocking that one down, brings up third down. Well, Santiago is a 6'2", 215 pound junior. 
again, he lines up at that outside linebacker and they roll him up as a defensive end. And he had a hard time, you know, on that play, trying to throw over him. Jack Howe did. There's he'll Cyril Sinti, 16th season overall, fourth since this merger. He's 15 and 16 as the Wilkes-Barre area coach, 86 and 89 overall in the district. Before that, he coached Coughlin, and Wilkes-Barre's just going to keep it on the ground. Shiner had it, and it brings up fourth down. So there's Paul Pat called timeout. So you'll see right in here, they're just a base blocking in here. Again, the Wolfpack, uh, again, I'm just critical of being an offensive line coach. They're standing up. So they're not giving themselves a chance to reestablish the line. And you were uh, saying that shock brought them down on that. So they're just going to roll the clock, either take the penalty, because Paul Pack doesn't seem like they want to call timeout. Well, thir the clock's rolling at 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah let uh, it go. They're up 21 nothing. There's no yeah. urgency on the Wolfpack. Well, Paul Pack gets the ball to begin the third quarter and coming up in our Toyota halftime report. We'll hear what's going on. Well, you can see tonight on the Fox 56 News first at 10. We'll check in with that crew. Amanda Cool has a nice interview with our main sponsor, Allied Services. Jan and I will be back in the booth and we'll hear from both coaches and see what they have to say about the second half. That's coming up in the Toyota halftime report. Still construction going on here, but they did a nice job putting some fences up and uh, make sure the lighting's here. And there is the uh, video of that will be the field house, which is directly behind the press box. And that is under construction. Right now, both teams are in some trailers. Air conditioned. Air conditioned trailers. They're very nice yes. trailers. Uh, again, this is gonna be a beautiful facility once it's all said and done. And uh, that field house, uh, I don't know if they're incorporating a weight room. I was trying to figure it out with the plumbing, but you know, it's gonna be beautiful. Green is back along with Nilsson for the Corcoran kick and it's a high hanging end over end. Pazenti actually called for a fair catch. That's one of those, the white team has to get out of the way. It almost hit a wall pop pack player at the 15 yard line. Again, when you have young kids in there, they're gonna to try to make something happen, especially when you're not uh, winning at this moment. So they just uh, wanna to try to make something happen and you forget when the ball's bouncing, we always tell them to say it's poison, so get away from it. So with 16 seconds left, expect Wall and Paul Peck take a knee, come out the second half, they get the ball. We, I, maybe. I, I think I think Doc's going to, hey, we saw him go for it on two fourth That's downs. That's true, absolutely. So I, I would expect some type of maybe they'll come back to that halfback pass or swing pass, you know, some kind of trick play maybe to spark them to get them back into this game. So let's see, number 27, Kiesendahl. Brings them back out, the sophomore quarterback. Gonna line up under his center, Jake LaBelle, 305 pound junior. Just a quick handoff. LaBednar takes him down, and that should do it for the first half here in Plains. It's been all Wolfpack and a lot of Johnson and Nelson here for Wilkes-Barre area. They lead at the half. 21 to nothing on opening night here in the Wolfpack Stadium for the football team. Amanda now gonna try to grab Cyril City and see what he has to say about his team with a shutout so far here at their new home. Let's go down to Amanda now with Coach Sinti. Amanda. That's right, Coach, what was going through your mind on that first touchdown play? Uh, geez, I forget what it was. No, it was, uh, listen, it's a great effort by the team. We came out, we, get, we, we took advantage of what they gave us, and that was a big thing of the keys. Don't turn the ball over, take advantage of your opportunities, and that's what happened. I mean, you said it yourself, you have to be pleased with how they're playing. How would you best describe this first half? Well, it's, it's probably, well, obviously, it's our best out of the first three games is the best first half we've had. So we came out, now we got to be aggressive second half. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you. Bob? Back Thanks, you. Amanda. Thanks, uh, Coach Sinti. It's halftime here in Wilkes-Barre. It's 21 nothing. Wolfpack over the Buckhorns. Toyota Halftime Report is on the way.
Thanks for sticking with us. It's halftime on my TV WQMY. Amanda Cool here, joined by Moria Incavado. Moria, can you tell me about what you do here at Allied? Yes, of course, Amanda. Thank you. So I haven't been here at Allied very long. I've been here. I'll be here a year in September, and I am really enjoying my new position. I am the talent manager for Integrated Staffing, which is a, di a division of Allied Services. What is the Integrated Staffing Division here at Allied? Okay, so it's a staffing agency right within Allied Services. What we're looking for is nurses to work in multiple lines of care, which would be inpatient rehab, transitional rehab, and skilled nursing within our facilities in Lackawanna, Luzerne County. What we're finding is that many nurses want to work for a staffing agency so they could enjoy their life and be able to fulfill their commitments while still working. So we're placing them in rewarding roles um, throughout Scranton and Wilkes-Barre. What are some of the benefits of going through your staffing agency as opposed to other temporary agencies? Well, I think the biggest thing is that we don't have a contract. I think that's a big deal. So we're able to place them in rewarding roles and we don't have to pay another agency. So we're actually able to pay the nurses a higher rate, which I think is brilliant. So tell me about that. How do those rates compare? Well, an LPN could make up to $50 an hour. That's pretty good money. I think it's a really successful program and I think that we're serving allied services and, and the community in a great way. What types of positions are available right now through your integrated staffing division? Well, right now um, we have uh, registered nurses, licensed practical nurses, and certified nurses aides. We have about 20 people right now in the agency and what I do is I'm scheduling them, trying to place them in the roles that the facilities have the most need. So it's, it's, been, it's been a good ride actually. Moria, you're kind of new here, only about a year. What drew you to Allied? Um, I needed a, a better work-life balance um, and I, I found it here. Um, and I mean, I, I love the other jobs I've had in my life too, but I really like this whole setting and I, and I know Allied, it's, they do wonderful work and I'm just glad to be part of the team. What's the one thing that's the most rewarding for you? Um, it's been really rewarding working with the directors of nursing, uh, working with the new hires at Integrated Staffing because they're enjoying it. Um, the facilities are getting the help that they need and I just feel like I've, I've been part of that team. So it's, it's been great, I like it. Thank you so much for telling your story and sharing that with us. We'll be right back with more highlights from tonight's game and the second half coming up. I'm Bill Conaboy. I'm president and CEO of Allied Services Integrated Healthcare System. On behalf of our 3,500 employees, we are thrilled to once again be a sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. I grew up in this community and I know what high school football means to this community. We wish all the parents, the students, and the staff the best of luck in the coming football season. Before the game, we're happy to present, on behalf of Allied Services, the Wilkes-Barre Area School District and Mike Namey, the athletic director, a check for $250 as we bring the first football game ever here at Wolfpack Stadium. We're back in the booth now, Bob and Jan. Great game, 21 nothing is the score. Walpaw Pack had their chances, but they have only 59 total yards. Give credit to the Wilkes-Barre defense. Makai Nelson, the big running back, he's done he's, it all for Wilkes-Barre. He really has, I mean, he's, He's rushed for, I think you said, 129 yards. He has two touchdowns on the night. But the biggest one I was impressed with was that 95-yard breakaway touchdown. 75 yards. Oh, 75. Oh, 95. The oh, you're 95 right. The break, yes. The first one he had. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're getting confused. So he had a 75-yard touchdown pass, and then he had a 96-yard touchdown run. run. That's, I mean, to go 96, and again, he was getting hustled, and he just kept going, and he cut back in, and, and beautiful run. So Wilkes-Barre's dominating here so far, 21-0 to score. The Buckhorns struggling on offense with the young team, new quarterback, and uh, looks like Dylan Pedrazzo, their leading rusher, has been out. And you mentioned 
he was in the first series, and he has almost half of that 59 yards. I, and again, he was getting the ball consistently and doing really nice work with it, and the offensive line was starting to jail. Now, you have a different running back. The quarterback's trying to do some passing. The receivers, again, it looks like they're a first-week team, again, being so young. Let's take a look at some first-half highlights as we get you ready for the second half in third quarter here. And as we mentioned, the halfback pass was the first touchdown ever here at Wilkes-Barre Area Stadium. A nice job by Johnson on this one. Again, I, he's just like, get off me. I'm, I'm going in. Go ahead, try and get me. I'm going to high-step you in for six. And then again, here oh. we go. Fumble ball. Again, nice job getting it there. I like what they were trying to achieve here again, but again, we talked about Johnson again, out, his out, playing outside linebacker. Again, that was fourth and two, nothing happens. Here's that great run I was talking about. Toss play, look at this, he just stiff arms him right down the sideline, he's going. Number two's trying, he's trying. And then he cuts back inside and for the touchdown. Here we go again, another run. He's not going to be denied tonight. I mean, he's just getting everything done that he can. Again, show flexing the how strong he can be. So that's where we're at, 21-0. While Paul Pack to receive the uh, third quarter kickoff. And Amanda, uh, well, Amanda talked to Wall Paul Pack coach Mark Watson. We'll get to down to her in a minute after the kickoff. Paul Pack gets the ball. Doc Watson had a, didn't bring his team into the... Uh, makeshift field house uh, left them on the field for a reason I would think well, the reason is uh, there's a lot of uh, the fans are out there mm -hmm. it's congested back there and again it's a shorter distance let me get my guys more rest gives us more time to coach them up and get them ready for to play this second half let's go down to Amanda now and talk to coach Watson that's right, guys. I talked to Coach Watson, and he said, you know what? Aside from three big plays, he said that was it. He said they're still in this game. As you saw, Dylan's drive is out with the team's lead rusher, and they're going to have Mark Nilsen. Mark Nilsen taking a majority of those carries, and you'll notice Mark isn't playing on the defensive side of the ball now, so they, he said they're going to have to make some adjustments on not only offense, but on defense as well. Good point, Amanda. So Corcoran uh, has it teed up as we have a little bit of a delay getting this third quarter underway. So keys to the second half maybe for Wall and Paul Pack, Coach. Wall and Paul Pack, they're going to have to try to establish the run. Uh, we know their pass game is going to be really tough, so let's concentrate on the run. Let's, let's really work with our size. Let's use what we have to our advantage, which is that big offensive line size, 272-pound average going across the board. And then for Wilkes-Barre, their defense, Coach Michaels is really, you know, they're pitching that shutout, and you know he wants to keep that. He's going to keep the pressure on Wall and Paul Pack. I don't think he's going to be worried too much about their passing game. He'll probably dial up a bunch of blitzes when it gets into that third and long time to put that pressure on that inexperienced quarterback. I'll take a quick second for uh, updates on a couple scores. One of the scores we're looking at is a game next week. We have Loyal Sock and Danville. Right now, the Lancers are beating Southern Columbia. That's right, Southern Columbia 13 to two at the beginning of the second half. We'll keep an eye on that upset as it goes on throughout the night. Danville winning their game as well. We are underway in the third quarter here at Wolfpack Stadium. It is Pesenti from his 10 who had a nice return on one special teams play. Wilkesbury makes the stop and here come the Buckhorns and Kiesendahl back out with 59 total yards in that first half looking to get anything going their way. Again, Doc just making sure, okay, look, make sure we do things. One of his assistant coaches there, I like that haircut on him. That's a good looking haircut. <laughs> I can relate. Again, now he's telling Kaisenhall, obviously the quarterback coach, telling him, look, just relax. Let's just take it one play at a time and let's make things happen on our terms. Missing a guy. Finally get uh, one more guy back into <laughs> You play with 11. You do. You know, you don't, right. When you're down 21, you don't want to play with 10. No, no. Not at all. So back underneath center. Power eye. And that's Martucci who goes into the tailback spot. 
makes the carry, goes up for about four yards. We got running back by committee right now. I like this. Power eye, there's big number 68, lead block, and Mike Fitzgerald, 295 pounds. Now, Mike, get up inside and block one of those black jerseys. Doesn't get any easier for Wall Paul Pack next week. They go to Delaware Valley. Martucci falls forward. The senior going to be two yards short. Defense uh, so far, you see McGregor, excuse me, Max Gregor make the tackle. They're playing well. They are. Look, there's a double team on number 78. Again, Ian Bednar, that first half, he was dominant. He was blowing things up. So good call, good coaching adjustment. Let's double team him and let's drive him back into a linebacker. But they're doing what they need to do, Bob. They're getting good, positive yardage. A third and two, that's very manageable. Martucci again. He falls forward. Good running from him. It's a figure law first down for Wallen Paul Pack. And Martucci's coming off with a helmet, so he's got to get that fixed before he can come back. But nice job. Look how they're starting to seal block and get things to the second level. That's why they're able to get these five and six yard chunks of uh, yardage. Have to go in and out of the huddle with a little more urgency. If you're running the ball, clock will continue to tick. You're down 21 nothing. So Nilsson, the sophomore, back into the eye. Almost lost it. He juggled it. We got it back and picks up seven. Boy, I'll tell you what. 53, Jacob Gonzalez, 260-pound senior. Watch him pull, and you're screaming, pin a pull, and he goes, look at that, right up inside. And again, the linebacker was there, the running back. <laughs> actually beat him to the block. Goodwin saw him coming and he's like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's really, this is what Doc Watson needs to do and the, the Buckhorn offense. They're just gonna have to keep pounding the ball, be patient, and good things are happening for him right now. That 4-4 defense from Wilkes-Barre there makes the stop. Bednar in there, Hagen ball, Horgan, the big guys up front. See how they're doubling up on there? They're getting things going. But now that time, they went to a five-man front. So they rotated one of the linebackers up, put five men up, had three men. So they're really crunching the box right now by putting all these guys in the box. They're leaving their free safety 10 yards deep. Even the corners are up tight. Bad snap. He's it all picks it up, but... Gregor's there to make the sack. So a loss on that play, and third and brings up a uh, fourth down. Yep, low and away, and again, look how he just, he already beat his man to the outside. Number 88, Jay Jordan Santiago's got to do a better job taking care of that. And I knew Coach Michaels was going to dial when it was third down. He's going to bring pressure. So a decent start for Wall Paul Pack, and they started at their own 25. But then a bad snap, one little mistake, and that pretty much uh, ends that drive. Decker in the punch again. Johnson's had trouble tonight catching the ball. It's a high end of her end. He catches it, he fumbles it. It's picked up by Ball and Paul Pack. That's Pacenti, Johnny on the spot. And it's Buckhorn football in Wolfpack territory. Well, that's the spark and the break they need. Let's see what happens here. It was a high punt. He did not call for the fair catch. No. Nope. Again, if you and again a coaching point, if you if we show that again in slow mo, I know we don't have we could do that. His elbows were out. He was trying to catch the ball with his hands. Ah, oh, you guys are awesome in the booth. Watch this. Watch his elbows. They flare out on the kick. You always teach the kids to keep your elbows in to make a big basket in there. See how his elbows are out, and that's where that happened. And again, great hit right there by number eight, Nilsson. Nilsson. Uh, you know, so a couple things happen on that, and again, the Buckhorns victorious on that series. Keys and goal down the middle to Basenti. Had him one time. This one was a little bit short. 
Well, after a major turnover like that, you want to strike while the iron's hot and the momentum's flowing your way. I like the call. A nice ball, too. Look at this. Great fake in there. Nice ball. I just let him a little bit too much. He may have had to rush it because there was a guy was in his face from Wilkesbury. Let's see if Ball Paul Pack can convert the turnover now into points. Being shut out so far in this one. Back to the ground, Martucci. Line couldn't get a hole for him. Good job by Wilkesbury. No gain on the play. Really good gap control by the defensive line on that with the linebackers filling in also. There was nowhere for him to run. Brings up third and 10, so I, I, they're gonna have to come back to the air. Watch this. They try again, number 68 doing it, but again, nice job, wrong arming. Number 30 there, Cam Hagenbaugh does a nice job. So Gannon Redding to the senior from behind number 32. So a big third down now. Let's see if Paul Pack blitzes, excuse me, Wilkesbury. Nope, Kiesendahl gonna keep it. A flag comes in from behind on the referee. Ball comes out, but they're gonna rule him down. Kiesendahl falls forward to the 37. But again, a flag is down. Referee's gonna sort it out. Earl Harris, the veteran referee here in the white hat. The Buckhorns, to, or the uh, Wolfpack, the not players yeah. don't look happy. They did not, I agree. <laughs> oh, wait. I think it was, they should have oh. stopped the play, right? I think what, the Wolfpack's upset because they didn't get the fumble recovery. Yeah. So you saw the flag, it was a little shift before that. That play will not count, so it backs them up five. Third and 15 now facing. Well, Paul Pack from the 44. Down 21 in this one. Time is ticking here in the third quarter. Figure you're two, in two down territory now. And Doc Watson uh, having a discussion with the referees on that far side about that call. He's had a couple of discussions with them, and again, frustration on his part too. Giesendahl going long into coverage, and what a catch by the tight end, Santiago. Wow, great. That was a great touch in terms of a throw. He just he placed that ball perfectly in there. Nice job. Again, one, two, drops back. Good set with his feet. Great concentration there. That's what the Buckhorns need to try to get back into this game. 32-yard pass play. Well, Paul Pack inside the Allied Services red zone for the second time tonight on that big pass and catch. Looking to get points on the board here in the third quarter. The RPO keys it all through the middle. The quarterback falls forward. I'd like to see a little more of that from the ball, Paul Pack, up to the 10. Well, Drew Kiesendahl does a nice job with that RPO. He, what the key to that is though, he's riding him. He rode the running back and then he pulled it out late and he was able to slip up in there. And number 33 for the Wolfpack, I believe is hurt. Yeah, Max Greger uh, limping a little bit and we have an injury timeout on the field or? He, he was holding his knee. So yeah. I, I saw that in the replay. The senior Max Greger is down and uh, Amanda has a special guest down on the sidelines. Amanda? That's right. Our second Dr. Todd Smile Cam is brought to you by Miss Hannah Fox, who sang the national anthem at tonight's game. Hannah, thanks for joining me. Of course. I'm so excited. Hannah, talk about how important it was for you to sing the national anthem here tonight. I know you sing at other places yeah. as well. Yes, definitely. So I've sang other places, like I sang in our Plains Little League games, and I've also done the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Rail Riders game. But especially this being my senior year, and we finally have our beautiful stadium open, it has been such an honor to not only sing in front of a bunch of my friends, but in front of an amazing and awesome audience this night. 
Hannah, talk about the energy in the student section. I know you're in there. Oh my goodness, it has been absolutely crazy. We are all super, super excited, and I cannot believe that this is finally happening, that we finally have something that's opening for all of us, and we're all able to come together and have an amazing night. Hannah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bob, up to you. That's a nice smile from Anna Fox. <laughs> and uh, for Dr. Todd Smilecamp, perfect choice. She has a beautiful voice. The rendition of the national anthem was awesome. Flag down, this may be uh, too many men on the field. It is for all Paul Pack. So after the, the injury timeout, you come out with 12. That's one way to get a touchdown. It is, but those guys, <laughs> the, you know, the, the, the receivers out there, they, they figure it out pretty quick. You know, you try it. Um, and again, Doc Watson was really worried about the mistakes that they've made, trying to limit them, and these are the things that are drive killers. Inexperience and youth, I mean, that's I what you're gonna chalk it up to. These, Both of these teams are kind of young. They are, and what's, what's kind of neat about seeing both of these teams progress right now is they're trying to fix things that they haven't been able to do in the previous two games, which is passing. So the five yards make it second down and nine now. Martucci gets through. Looks like LaBelle might be banged up now for the Buckhorns. Their center, he needs to be helped up, and he's going to limp, limp back. Nice job. Again, outside pressure coming from, guess who, number eight, Naquan Johnson again. He's just wreaking havoc again, forcing everything a lot faster than the Buckhorns want. So Bednar also made the stop. We'll have to check out LaBelle now. Their experienced center was limping around. Well, he's still out there, yeah. so. Back to the power eye for the Buckhorns, trying to get on the board inside the Allied Services red zone. They're going to go to the air. Little fade into the end zone. Great defense by Nelson out there as they try to get to Holbergs. I like the call. Again, great coverage. There's a lot of hand action on both of the players right there. They're both kind of like pushing again, just, yeah, he jumped a little bit too soon and then, you know, high school football. Good pass though by Keyes It though. was. So fourth down, uh, no field goal team out there this time. So Buckhorn's gonna go for it again. Uh, they've gone twice in the first half, both unsuccessfully. Five seconds on the play clock. Keyes to the middle. On the slant, and it is a Walla Paul Pack touchdown. Jake Holbert holds it in. One of the toughest pass routes to defend is the slant pattern, and he just did the right, nice slant, beat him on the inside or a post pattern on that one. Again, once you get that angle and that leverage, you know, that was a really well-placed ball, and again, good concentration on 17 to pull that in for the touchdown. Low snap, but they get it down. Reynolds' kick is up, and it is good. So Wall Paul Pack cuts into the Wilkes-Barre lead. They're down 14 now in the third. We are back. Well, Paul Pack got on the board after the muffed punt. So they score off a fumble. 39 yards on the drive. Big play, a couple of big passes from Kiesendahl. They really did, but they, the one negative thing I'm gonna say is that they took a lot of time off the board with that drive. They did a great job, special teams. Another nice high towering kick. Cerro up and good special teams by the Buckhorns. Tomorrow is a college football doubleheader. Tune in at 10 for Fox pregame show. Then at noon, the highly anticipated matchup of number one Alabama takes on the Texas Longhorns, followed by Washington State and Wisconsin, only on Fox 56. Couple big games there in college football. Penn State plays Ohio tomorrow at noon. So we have a couple local guys there. One from the Wyoming Valley Conference and Dom DeLuca getting some playing time on defense. And North Schoolkill's Tyler Elton started at middle linebacker. So good to see some Northeast 
PA guys from the 570 getting playing time on the on the Lions. Nelson gets held up by his drawers. He almost lost his pants. <laughs> but shock took him down in gain of eight. Again, they really are pounding the right side of the ball and ball pack defense. Number 83 is rushing up hard. They're double team kicking him out, and that just creates a huge hole. And again, shock really holding on for dear life on yeah, that one. Yeah, absolutely. So back to the bread and butter for Wilkes-Barre. Shiner's there, but there is the big man, 365 pound Sam Phillip. The senior hauls him back. But they're gonna say he went forward and about a yard short. But again, nice job. You'll see he's double teamed and he broke through the double team to make that tackle. Again, Sam Phillip has been really quiet in this game and that's why, because of the double teams. But that time he just turned his shoulders and broke it for a, t a tackle. Well, he got to the line to gain and it's a figure law first down for Wilkes-Barre. Still in the third quarter, time ticking. Well, Paul Pack's defense gets Shiner right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Good job to spread him out. Boy, Zayden Shock really did a nice job to force him to the outside. You'll see him scrape across. There he is, right in there. Nice, and 13, and then brought down by number 88. Again, I've called his name a couple times tonight. He's done a real nice job, Santiago. Santiago. Second along now. They're gonna put uh, Nelson into the slot, I believe. We know what that means. And they're out, jet sweep. There it is. Ball, Paul Pack, trying to string him up, but they can't get the speedy Nelson. Uses a stiff farm. He's inside Wolfpack territory for another figure law first down. Well, the Buckhorns did a nice job trying to string that out. Great job, replay guys. There's that power right in there. You get lead by number 53, or 56, Gio Gonzalez. And again, missed tackles. One thing that I know Coach Doc Watson we talked about is he felt that his team needs to be more physical and do a better job tackling. 16 yards for Mr. Nelson. When they want a big play, they go to number three. Paul Pack trying to, excuse me, Wilkesbury trying to get that touchdown back. Shiner in there, flag comes in, clock will stop. He goes ahead for two at best. Uh, back him up five yards, illegal motion. So a break for Paul Pack, down 14. Wilkes-Barre's not scored in this half. Sometimes it's difficult to try to score when the ball, the opposite team had it for uh, seven and a half minutes. Comes the blitz from the Buckhorns, and we're gonna get a, uh, I think a timeout from the Wolf Pack, let me see. Cyril Sinti needs to clean things up for Wilkes-Barre. They head to Hazleton next week. Delaware Valley's gonna be the opponent for Wall and Paul Pack. And Delaware, that'll be their first conference game too. And again, Doc Watson, like he said, he, every game, he's got six games they're playing up. Another 6A school he's gotta get ready for. Well, they actually, they, they have DelVal, Abington, and Prep back to back to back. So <laughs> three more tough games for Wall and Paul I, I, Pack. I just feel, I feel his pain. So they're looking at the play clock and that's what they're gonna reset it. So still first down and 15 for the Wolf Pack in this third quarter. Try to go inside to Nelson, no running room. Jake LaBelle, number 70. Yeah, he's playing both sides. Again, nice job with that read. Scrape off and make the tackle. 
Again, they go with the power play right there. Look at that, 32 shot out of there. Aiden Robertson, this 5'9", 180 pound senior. He looked like he was shot out of a cannon on that one. Second nice and long blitz. now. Second and long, Sorry coach, for uh, this Wilkes-Barre team. Kind of stalling out with their offense here in the third. How looking, chased, pulls it in, and then it's gonna be brought down out of bounds, and there's a flag. Shock had him the sophomore, and again, they rolled him out of bounds, and that's gonna get a flag every time. It was a gain of six, and tack on more in a first down. And again, they know the Buckhorns, you're, you're emotional, you're playing, and again, he's running, here we go. Yeah, I think what stings there is the automatic first down. They had him backed up. Here, let's look at it now, coach. Here it is right there. You see him running out. Now watch, he's out of bounds. And again, that was just totally uncalled for, not needed. Uh, you're always trying to promote good sportsmanship. And Shock's played well all night long. He really but again, has. Just I mean, a sophomore. And again, it's just like you're coming. And again, if you notice, there was, I don't want to say helmet to helmet, but it was helmet to shoulder pad. And we do have a down player for the, uh, the Wolf Pack. Wolfpack. Let's take a look at the schedule now for Wilkes-Barre. We talk about schedules. They head to Hazleton. That's tough. We know uh, Berwick is just, they're really being really physical and Excuse tough. Excuse me, they have Hazleton here. My bad. Okay. So uh, Berwick uh, is on the road, then Crestwood. And, and you know, they they have a tough meet of their schedule as well. Jeez. Yeah, and we know Crestwood, they got to get ready for that wonderful single wing that Coach Archangeli runs up there. Keith Olsmer struggled so far the first two games, but again, look at that. All the, there's nothing. You go, we got a breather in there. <laughs> there isn't. No breathers at all. Dallas is beating Williamsport pretty big tonight. Uh, well, Valley, Wyoming Valley West is losing to Pittston area. Crestwood is winning. And there we see the injured player. And is that shock? Or excuse me, is, is that, that uh, how? Excuse me, the quarterback? I think that might be the QB. One thing it I is know, how it is how and I hope I mean he's okay he's walking around but it, it just like you have to come out mandatory one play one thing I noticed that I'm surprised the Wolfpack hasn't done is gone with a long or a hard count in the previous two games uh, the defensive line for Paul Pack has been drawn off sides so McCleary will go under the center and take the snap it is a good snap back to Nelson well, Paul Peck is right there. The first hit by Rafferty, and then the shock holds him up. Gain of two. Time ticking now. Minute left in his third quarter, and there you see uh, Howe. He does not look like he might be coming back, so it's too bad for the freshman. Jack Howe has a touchdown pass tonight. And he's done a nice job control, taking control of the offense. No, he doesn't. Excuse me. They, will, they gave it to Nelson. McClary has some speed. He tries to get the outside. He's tripped up by Moses, short of the first down for the senior, McClary. Well, you'll see right here, again, you would think it's a great, actually great play call because, again, you're going to key on Nelson again with that fake toss keep. Nice job. Nice call. Looks like they can run this quarter out. No timeout's gonna be called this time for Cyril <laughs> Sinti with his team up 21-14. Three quarters in the book here at the new Wolfpack Stadium. Wilkes-Barre still leads 21 to seven as we head to quarter to number four. Welcome back to Wolfpack Stadium where Wilkes-Barre area leads well and Paul Pack 21-7. As always, we introduce you to two very impressive scholar athletes that will be competing for a scholarship at the end of the season after they submit a video. And it is my honor to introduce you to tonight's scholar athletes. From Wallen Paul Pack, our athlete is Andrew Bromberger. Andrew is on the cross country and track teams, and he's also in band and choir. He has 105% average and is in the top 10% of his class. He's in FBLA and Science Olympiad and is a member of the National Honor Society. 
He's, although he's undecided on where he would like to go for college, he plans on running cross country and track in college, and he would like to major in aerospace engineering. And from wilkes Bay area, senior Allie Chicolo. She's the captain of the field hockey and lacrosse teams, a member of the National Play Honor Society the and the National Spanish Honor Society, Key Club and Yearbook Play Club, down and down the down Outdoor down Club. Down she is down eighth down in her class, and she plans on playing field hockey at King's College, where her sister is on the team, and she plans on majoring in education. Once again, two great scholar athletes there uh, vying for maybe a $5,000 scholarship. On the field, we saw Javant McClary, who's the backup quarterback, just take it and go for, you know, 14 yards. <laughs> quarterback keep, you know, on this time. And then number three, he gets up. That's Aiden Green. He gets up a little bit stiff on that one. He's, he saw, I don't know if he was cramping. So inside the Allied Services red zone, first and goal, Wilkesbury trying to extend that lead. Nelson looking for another touchdown, and he's going to be about three yards short. Nice job by the offensive line to create these gaps and holes. But Nelson, nice burst up through there. And again, watch his leg drive. Again, he's, he's fighting all the way to the end. Nice response from Wilkes-Barre after Walla Pulpak's score. This is the 11th play of the drive. It started at their own 24-yard line. Jack, Jake Howe, Jack Howe, excuse me, the quarterback for Wilkes-Barre has been knocked out. And taking it in is Makai Nelson for his third rushing touchdown of the night. And it extends the Wilkes-Barre lead. Nice job in here. Look at it. They get the defensive line is standing up other than Sam Phillip, who was trying to get in there. Submarine technique. The other two tackles stood up, got driven out. Nelson was able to get in there for a touchdown. So another big night for the junior. The kick from Corcoran is up and good. And it's back to a 21 point lead for the Wolfpack. Full moon, lots of wolf howling going on here <laughs> in Wilkes-Barre Area Stadium. Their team leads 28-7 on the first football game ever on the new turf here in Plains. A little line drive kick, and Wall Pulpack will fall for it at the 21-yard line. So nice response from Wilkes-Barre going down the field in 12 plays. 70, 70, 76 yards, 73 yards, excuse me. And Coach Watson's team now just going to be coached up. Again, very young in the skill position. They lost their lead back in the first quarter. So it's been quarter, uh, running back by committee. And they just haven't had it. I mean, the, the passing game actually has been pretty aggressive and pretty good. And they're starting to, they're starting to understand it. They're starting to get that timing down, that critical timing. Um, Bob, you, you mentioned you hit on it that it's been running back by committee. You just can't really keep doing that. It's got to be, you got to have the guy. And we knew who the guy was earlier in the game, Padrazil. So Kizadal from the shotgun, blitz coming, and they may have gotten to him. Trying to get Holbert out there. McClary on the stop. You'll see pressure coming from the top of your screen here, right in there. Well-designed blitz by number 32 in there. Doing a nice job, Gannon Redding. Again, I, I knew Coach Michaels, you know, when he was at Valley West, he always was notorious for having a very, very aggressive defense, and he's still bringing it here to the Wolfpack. Try to set up a screen in Nilsson. Wilkes-Barre reads it. Gabe Saracino, the sophomore with the tackle. So some of the younger, younger guys coming in coming now in. for Again, I like the call. Again, but the running back actually outran his coverage. So again, that's a, that's a, a coach up thing. They're gonna be working on that to make sure that he's behind his blockers. He's in those getting a workout. Oh, he is, and you see Coach Michaels on, on the right of your screen there. 
There's no, there's no situ. I mean, uh, you can't get this in practice. So this is great for him in terms of experience. Giesendahl, great catch by Holber. He's dragged down by Nelson, but is a figure law first down. Gain of 16. Nice ball, I really, boy, nice tight spiral. Great job in there. Again, here we go. Buckhorn's doing what they need to do. Just get to keep first downs coming. Holbert has the only touchdown, and it's a catch as Nelson takes him down. So the drive keeps alive. Ten minutes left in this game. Both teams trying to improve to two and one on the year. A lot of time for Kiesendahl, and he overthrows Holbert again. Goes incomplete. Boy, the pocket was set up real nice, and, and he stepped up. It started to collapse. He stepped up, and again, I don't think his mechanics were perfect on that, hence the, the reason why the ball was up a little bit high. Give a couple quick scores of note. Southern Columbia losing still 27-10 to 10 to Loyal Sox. Wow. Danville is going to win, so that would be a great matchup next week if that hold scores, score holds. And Western Wayne is shutting out Old Forge, which is a real big surprise for the Wildcats. So week three going down, uh, maybe some upsets tonight. He's into a lot of time again, going deep, and out throws uh, Vicente, who comes up a little bit gimpy on that. A little cramping going on. Third down along now. Again, I like what they're, they're being aggressive. They're coming out. Nice ball, just overthrew. And again, this happens when you have young kids playing at these skill positions, Bob. Reiterating what you have said, you know, from the get start of this game, we knew Wall and Paul Pack had some really inex uh, inexperienced kids, young kids, but they're gaining valuable experience tonight against the Wolf Pack. Wilkes-Barre's next opponent, they'll welcome in Hazleton. Hazleton beating Wyoming, uh, excuse me, North Polk tonight, 35 to seven. And we'll have a timeout uh, by the Buckhorns. And Delaware Valley's gonna go to 0-3 when they meet Wall and Paul Pack. So here is what Wall and Paul Pack gets. They get Delaware Valley next week. Then they travel Abington and Prep, so three big games in a row. North Pocono playing well. It does, doesn't get any easier <laughs> for this Buckhorn team uh, down the line. Maybe wow. maybe the win comes at Abington, another win, but we'll see. We'll but see, yeah. Again, Delaware Valley going to be 0-3, finally playing a conference game, and you know they're not going to be happy. No, they're not. And, and you know Coach Olsmer up there is probably fit to be tied. Abington, you know, we've seen glimmers of hope, but, you know, teams have just beaten them because of mistakes. Scranton Prep, boy, they, they're putting a hurting on tonight over Lake Leibman. Last time I checked, it was 66 to three, I believe, or six. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they have a lot to prove after the week one loss to Lakeland. Back here, it's third along for the Buckhorn. Here comes the blitz, and they're gonna get him. Ja'Kai Jackson, the junior, comes in. His first sack of the season, and that will be a punt now for Wallen Paul Pack. Well, the center stepped to his left, but he didn't. He, he opened the shoulders, which allowed the linebacker just to keep going by. We want to try to tell the offensive lineman to keep your shoulders parallel with the line of scrimmage. Don't go perpendicular. Oh, looking like it's going to be a W in the first game here at Wolfpack Stadium for the football team. Another low snap. Decker with a high hanging kick. This time Johnson just leaves it go. Wise on his part. It's down at the 34. This NFL season on Fox kicks off Sunday with a huge doubleheader. First yeah. game is the Detroit Lions as they host Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. Go Birds! Then the New York Giants take on the Tennessee Titans. Fox NFL starts Sunday on Fox 56. How's your fantasy team doing? Well, one person last night <laughs> crushed me. Cooper Cup, 32 points. So I I'm got just... Cooper Cup. <laughs> 
If you had the Buffalo defense, you got a lot of points, according to my son. Almost 50. I know, but I just was like, <laughs> wow. Phillip uh, brings down Nelson. Now some, you know, this wall Paul pack team playing still aggressive. Nelson not happy with the tackle. Don't want things to get out of hand. Their locker rooms are literally next to each other. They were, and I think that, again, when I went out there at halftime to look down, it was just wall to wall, a sea of uh, Wilkes-Barre fans, mm -hmm. wall and Paul pack fans hitting the concession stands and the uh, porta potties back there. So yeah, they're going to have to do something with how the teams get back uh, back to their locker rooms. Right. So there's not a lot of room. I'm, they'll work on that for next week's game, I'm sure. Still working out the bugs here. Clary in as the quarterback, and he's going to take off again. He's got to figure law first down inside Buckhorn territory. Takes it down to the 46-yard line. Gain of almost 17. Wow, but Clary on this one, boy, does this bring back memories of uh, Michael Vick? I mean, that type of quarterback back there, Jalen Hurts running the ball like that. I mean, they're just, they can't stop him. I mean, something for now Nino Cinti to look at his offense next week against Hazleton. <laughs> you throw a little wrinkle in once in a while, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Instead of going wildcat, let's just put him back there as a regular quarterback. We're going to put him in the shotgun now. What both coaches talk about, it, and we've talked about it similar times, is the ball is down by McCleary while Paul Pack Smart falls play. on him. Is the lack, a flag comes in, we'll take a look at that, is the lack of a second scrimmage. It, really, that first game for some teams is their second scrimmage. It really is. And, you know, Bob, we, we, we hear all the time in the NFL, you know, that, oh, they don't play the starters, this, that, the other thing. And you'll see that, like you saw that last night with yeah. the Rams, the timing's just not there. And the same thing when it trickles down to high school, We'll get the call from Earl Harris. Personal foul. 56. Oh. You're allowed to say the name, uh, the, the number now, but we usually don't don't run that. Uh, so anyway, th there you saw the personal foul. But let's let's continue on that. Again, with the you know, you're coming in. You got one week. You have one week of heat acclimatization where you're limited to two-hour practice or three-hour practice it's coach's choice then the following week you got five practices to get ready for your first scrimmage then you come back and most teams are going into school so that disrupts it then you're trying to get ready for your first game and there's just so many question marks at that point i, I know uh, my staff we would end up scripting our plays wow as nelson breaks out after the personal foul backed him up he gets some of that back most of that it's going to be third down and call it about 12. so you see nelson on here doing what he does best again now they're going to their right side while and paul packs left and there's something that nino sinti the offense coordinator saw on that side that they're taking advantage of so as i was saying bob so we would end up scripting so we could really honestly mm -hmm. judge the kids say here are the first 10 plays they knew what was coming so we can get a great evaluation on them but now you're throwing that you know you scripted then you got to go game situation week one nelson through is going to be taken down short of the first down by ionetta nelson again nearly 200 mark he had 216 last week against abington he's been part of all four touchdowns as Makai Nelson, the junior. One through the air and three on the ground. Well, Hazleton right now, they're, it's a pretty easy scout, Bob. Who would you have to stop? T tonight for Wilkes-Barre? Yeah, if it, you were if, playing Wilkes-Barre next week. Oh, you have to stop number three. Yeah, take care of three. But again, now you got Johnson, and I'll tell you, this quarterback, McClary, McClary is doing an awesome job in there. So now that, that adds a different dimension in terms of defensive coordinators trying to figure that out. Timeout for Wolfpack, 6.33 left in this game. They call timeout probably to figure out the punt situation. It's fourth down and long. It, I can't see them going for it, but you never know. So here's what we have. Again, we will be on the road next week into Lycoming County. A big matchup in District 4 and the Harland Conference Division 2. Danville taking on Loyal Sock. We'll be live at 7 o'clock. A lot of talent on the field that day. 
uh, on both sides of the ball. Too too much to go over right right now. But Correct. Stay tuned for that. We will be on the road, and then we're back into the Wyoming Valley Conference the following week against Dallas Valley West. Still not getting a win yet. Wow. Dallas being Williamsport, and now that Trail 04's game looks like a game like we don't know which way it's going to go. Well, um, we know that that's a heck of a rivalry right there. Yep. The teams don't like each other. The coaches respect each other, but don't like each other. And and Old Forge is um, an enigma this year. So far, I mean, yep. and Trail's doing very well. You know, Coach Jervis does a nice job with that wing tee there. Coach Manello right now, they're on the high side. They were beating Williamsport 20 nothing last time I checked. And I don't know the last time Southern Columbia lost a regular season game to uh, a conference opponent as Nelson easily gets to the outside, picks up a lot of yards, and a lot of people stand around because there's a yellow hanky on the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Again, there you go. Uh, Nelson at the quarterback position. You know? And well, the Wildcat. He played quarterback last year, so right. it's the Wildcat position. But uh, they think this one's coming back. Again, mistakes. You can't make the stake mistakes against the Hazelton team, against the better teams that Wilkesbury is going to see going down the line. Oh, and that, that schedule they have is pretty brutal coming up. So, and they're fighting. They're in with District uh, 11, 6A has That's how many teams? Four, four. Four. I have that right here. I came prepared, Coach. You always do, Bob. 6A is in with District 11, so they're going to bring in eight. And right now, Wilkesbury's ninth. You're dealing with Emmaus, Nazareth, Northampton, Hazleton, Parkland. You know, those are the teams now Wilkesbury's battling to get in. Juggle by Pacenti. And he just can't get to the outside. Good special teams play by the Wolfpack. 614 left in this one. Buckhorn's trailing by. 21. And we're going to see some of the younger players now come in. I think for Wooksbury. Nelson's still out there. Some other guys. Get then some work. You know what also is going by the wayside are JV games and freshmen. I mean, the freshmen, not a lot of teams now have freshman teams. They're going to the junior high route. A lot of ninth graders mm -hmm. playing on the varsity and the JV games, too. Well, Bob, I mean, this is an anomaly right now. If you look down on both sidelines, they have good amounts of players, nice amounts. So these two teams could afford to do that, but the other schools don't have the same amount of kids playing. He's and all chased, and they get him. Redding, the senior, with his fourth sack on the season. Kiesendahl, you know, eluded the first defender, but then again, right in there, he does a beautiful job maintaining his uh, his pursuit angle and drops him for another loss. He's and all finding some kind of lane, but Nelson on the coverage there once again on Holborn. We've seen that matchup most of tonight. <laughs> well, we know who his favorite receiver is. And again, when you're matched up with Nelson, the odds are not going to be in your favor. It's nice to see the Wilkes-Barre sideline that they are trying to get their younger kids in there, rotate through their first home inaugural game on this beautiful stadium, get everybody some playing time. Comes the blitz down the middle, and it's uh, juggled. Almost picked off by Johnson. Trying to hit Nielsen down the middle, and it goes incomplete. Here comes the punt team again for Walla Paul Pack. Again, dangerous uh, throw right here. Pressure right in his face from the linebacker ball. Again, it was actually Johnson had the ball and it just bobbled out of his hands. There were three black jerseys around, one white jersey in there.
Decker kicks it. Goodwin just gets out of the way, and it will be down right there. 507 left in the fourth quarter. So we have a final, and probably the biggest upset in years. Loyal Sock beats defending double-A champ Southern Columbia in a regular season PHAC game, 27 to 10. It's their first conference loss since 2010. Oh my. And they lost to Lewisburg in that game. So Loyal Sock is gonna be undefeated and Danville will be undefeated when we head to Lancer country next week. Wow, congratulations to Coach Van Fleet and that whole entire staff and team. So a huge victory for Justin Van Fleet's team, and I will be out there next week talking to them. We have a quarterback uh, change. Let's see, I couldn't see a number on that, number nine. And we're gonna go to our Lawrence Allen uh, Jr. Could drop that one. And now it's just a matter of the time rolling out for this game here in Wolfpack country. Nice run down De the sidelines. Devon Underwood. Looks like Underwood, a freshman. Wow. With a huge <laughs> run. Coach Brennan had a really rough night tonight they, uh, with Central Columbia, 69 nothing. Yeah, we're gonna see some offense next week. No doubt between the Ironmen and the Lancers. Probably the favorites in District 4 Triple A. I would say. They easily can meet in the championship game again. Nice handoff. Watch the freshman with his ball handling. He was, wasn't on, he was gonna change it, but again, smart thing. You always keep the ball away to the sideline. <laughs> I think we're tacking some stuff on here. I missed the call. And there'll be some uh, happy fans leaving Wilkes-Barre area tonight. We want to thank the uh, staff, the superintendent, Mike Navy, and everything for allowing us you know, to come in. Even under construction, uh, we were able to park the truck and recruited an awesome job uh, of setting up here and, and you know, trying not to upset everything that's going on here. <laughs> And we thank everyone uh, from the project manager on down here at Wilkes-Barre area. If you get a chance to come by, I mean, you want to see a brand new stadium, it, it is beautiful here. McClary with the toss out there to Underwood. Again, he steps up and again, he got popped in the back there. You know, and I think this will help, you know, motivate the students and, and motivate some kids to come out for football now. And, be able to play on, on a team that can contend and, and you know has great coaching and a beautiful facility. I mean, Bob, think about it. and you you we talked about this earlier the COVID that the kids the seniors had to overcome not playing a home game until your senior year and to have this beautiful facility, but they have a good turnout now and I think now again your key to that a winning team okay a great. Everything around here in Wilkes-Barre says championship, and that's what they're going to start to demand. You didn't see it. You mentioned the weight room back here. They have a beautiful weight room in the school. Oh, I, okay. I they they really there. do. We saw it when we, we did the basketball game there, and, okay. I, and they utilize that. They also have a nice rate, weight room over at the with the junior high now, which was GAR. Okay. I was there the other day getting out of the rain. I was in, the, <laughs> in there, and I'm like, this is a beautiful facility they have over there so they're utilizing that so they have what they need they just need the guys the the players to to really uh you know take it to heart and, and do that extra work that needs to be done and that's what and it's going to be an expectation you had three great pride areas in Wilkes-Barre you had the Coughlin you had GAR you had Myers and there was this ownership and and, and 
uh, selfishness, yep. I'm going to use, maybe that's the wrong adjective, that they're so much pride in what they wanted to do. At first, I mean, Coach Sinti had an uphill battle trying to blend all the kids together. Forget the GAR, all the history. This is the Wolf Pack now. That's what we need. Yeah, I mean, the, the great history. GAR, Myers, oh. Coughlin. Uh, that, the the Wooksbury Stadium down there. I mean, I remember seeing Mannheim <laughs> Central play Berwick there with George Curry and, and those big games yep. at, at that old stadium. But this this is the new stadium. This is the future. It's 2022. You'll hopefully maybe see some state games here. Yeah, you know, maybe you'll see some district finals here. Um, whether or not Wooksbury's in it or not, because this is the this is the place that people want to go, and it's easy to find. It's right off the Cross Valley Expressway. You come in, the parking looks great. They're doing, I think I can see they're doing a nice job parking people. So overall, I'm sure there's bugs to be worked out. Oh, there and, always and, are. But, but so far, I, I think Mike Namie and his crew have done a, a great job and, and, and coach and uh, the superintendent. Well, the vision that and, they had the for the district, too. you know, the yep. school board and, and, you know, the administration here. Bob, I, I you know, one thing I, I was looking at was it, Nice eight-lane track. Amy yeah. being a former track coach also. Districts you know, here? Districts here. Yep. Uh, you know, they're going to be in contention now with, you know, with Scranton for that district final. Well, I think they, they, now they can rotate. They and, they and they should. And they should. And they should. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, a beautiful track, plenty of room. And oh. once it's all done, right. yeah, um, to host District 2 track and field. And I'm sure they're going to they're definitely rotate between the Wyoming Valley and, and, and Scranton. That's I only mean, fair. And again, I'm not not. Scranton has a beautiful oh, stadium they, and they facility have a new, too. They have a new track as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it'll be neat to be able to flip flop those for the coaches and for the kids to get experience. Well, a lot of dancing going on here in a Wolfpack Stadium. Student body happy. Their team's winning. Players dancing. <laughs> and, and why not? I mean, this is this hey, is a night to celebrate. It is. And congratulations to the Wolfpack on this. You know, all the things they had to overcome over the last few years to come out opening night and tack on their first win in this stadium. We didn't mention the press box. We showed it, but we're so happy. <laughs> we have our own room. We have our own room. Uh, uh, beautiful Great windows, view. you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe we, uh, you know, make a suggestion to get some air conditioning. I don't know. Hey, the freshman, he's going to go in for a Wilkesbury touchdown. Good for him. That is Devon Underwood. The freshman scores in the new Wolfpack Stadium. 5'9", 155 pounds, probably wet, I would imagine, but That's nice. fast, though. <laughs> he is, look at that. Number 70 trying to get out there. Does a nice job, look at that. He just beat them all to the outside with that speed. And there you see the lights for the celebration. 158 left in the game. And oh. We had a kick new kicker in there. I wanted to make sure we get Joseph. Look at Ajegio is the uh, sophomore kicker number 99. Ajegio, excuse me. With the extra point. Also, last week, I believe, or a week before, we had Shelby Ardo Belko, number 51, kick an extra point. Uh, she was the first female ever to do that in Wilkesbury history. I don't, we may have missed her tonight. If I did, I apologize. I'm not sure she is down here tonight. I mean, she played, I think she plays soccer. She's a very good basketball player. So, so you're saying she's pretty good at sports? A good, very good at sports. And I saw her kicking. Um, in one of the pra in the scrimmage, they saw the scrimmage this year against North Pocono. And she was and she did the kicking in that game, and wow. she did great Good for her. Good, to, yeah, really nice. So 158 left. Wilkesbury's going to go to two and one. Walden Paul Pack's going to fall to one and two. We continue on into the Wyoming Valley and Lackawanna football schedules here in District Two. Next week we'll start talking district points, especially in District Four. Uh, and the week after, we'll, we'll continue that conversation in District Two because. It's that time. And it, it really almost is. almost halfway through. Goes by fast. I just can't believe it's, we're sitting here, and we're fortunate that we're able to sit here because of this wonderful press box, um, that we're three games in. Mm -hmm. 
That's Zayden Shock who picked it up. We talked about him on defense. Ball pop back will come out. So it's back to the drawing board, back to practice for Mark Watson's team and Wall Paul Pack. I mean, that first drive, they started from their six back in the first quarter. It was very positive. Dylan Pedrazo was in there. And he was running well. You know, the drive stalls. They punt. They get the ball back. But then yeah, everything from there just didn't go Wall Paul Pack's it, way tonight. It did. And, uh, you know, I hope Dylan Pedrazo is doing okay. I don't know what the diagnosis was. But he was really starting to get in the groove. And, and again, they started at their five-yard line. They drove down to Wilkes-Barre's 45-yard line. And the drive stalled. So, again, he's going to be a good one for them. He's an all going to continue to throw. A lot of time in there. Good job by the offensive line. And Hober can't pull it in. So the 6'4 junior trying to use his height out there. Already has a touchdown. There you see the freshman, Jack Howe, who was injured in the fourth quarter. Glad to see him up and around. He'll be back next game. And here we see it again. Uh, Coming in to your screen again. Good coverage here. Number 25 was right there. That's Trayvon Jambetsky. He's also a uh, freshman. So Coach Sinti really must like this freshman class. Give them that experience. So then when it's that next man up mentality, they can say they have experience. Nice pass in the, to the flat goes uh, incomplete, trying to hit Aiden Pearson, number 33. You know, you know what else Walt Wilkesbury will be able to remember this night for? We're going to give him a plaque. And they're going to say, that's the that's night the we opened Wilkesbury Stadium. <laughs> Here is the FNR plaque proudly displayed in the Wilkesbury area school. That's probably the first plaque they have to hang up, too. That is awesome. We brought it, right? <laughs> oh, wait. I I thought you brought it. No, that was the uh, producer, Steve. Steve. He's on Steve. the ball. His Trust name me is when Steve I tell you. Phillips. He had it out there already. <laughs> I saw it. I was kidding. 73's got to get off the field, and they're going to call timeout or the flag. Let's see what it is. 73 just had to get off, tried to run. Right, let's see. Did coach call a timeout? They're just giving them, give them the five yard. It is a penalty. 141 left in this one. Defense. Tyler Peterson on uh, audio tonight. Had a little couple bugs. John Klingerman, our engineer, also helping us out. Clearing up some things. Ernie Magnoni does a wonderful job. He gave us the highlights, what they were going to broadcast for us. Thank you, Ernie. Appreciate that. Giesendahl, great athlete, comes through. It is a figure law first down for Walla Paul Pack near the 50. Again, we, we can't do this without our sponsors. You see Luzerne County Community College replay. They've been with us for a long time. Allied Services as well, figure law. I mean, you see them throughout the game, and, and please uh, help us out by helping out our sponsors. And Dr. Todd. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but Dr. Todd <laughs> Pachewski, uh, I know his Lake Lehman team lost big tonight to prep, but we thank him. Shane Madrag uh, Madrigal, excuse me, a junior quarterback, number seven in. Tall kid, 6'3". Out to Holbert, he makes a nice spin move. And it will be a figure law first down for the Buckhorns under one minute to play here. I like how the Buckhorns are still, you know, they're in the game. It's not over. They're still pressing, still getting the kids' experience. Nice play. Again, rolling out. Again, that's always a difficult pass for a right-handed quarterback rolling to your left. This time, again, nice job. He gets it, spins inside. Watch. Nice. All right. Keep it going. After the first down, the clock rolls. The blitz, and they get him. Big number 52 shoots in for the sack. 
David Brito, if that's correct. Boy, there were three guys, black jerseys coming right off the edge. No one picked them up. And that's a, <laughs> that's a tough time for a quarterback to come in. Madrigal comes in here, you know, late in the game. Trustin Johnson also there, number 23 for Wilkes-Barre area, and that should just about do it. Uh, a timeout quickly on the field. See Coach Ed Michaels in there talking to his defense. Again, they, they'll face an uphill battle next week facing undefeated Hazleton, but a big win over North Pocono tonight. A lot of people thought that might be a little bit closer, but the Cougars playing well again, but they're in 6A in that top District 11 two for some regional because we have to include Williamsport of course correct so last play of the game should be made without a first down and Wilkes-Barre is gonna get him taken down and that will do it Wilkes-Barre area gets their first win in their inaugural game here at the Wolfpack Stadium the final score 34 to 7 Second win of the year for the Wolfpack. Wall Paul Pack falls to one and two. And it's on to week number four of high school football. A lot to celebrate here tonight, Coach, and why not? Uh, great facilities. Thank to everyone. We mentioned that. And uh, a you know, beautiful night for high school football in northeastern Pennsylvania. This is what high school football really is all about. It is. Beautiful night, beautiful facilities, great game for the kids. Uh, Wall and Paul Pack. Not feeling as great right now. And I got to give a shout out to our replay guy. I'm not sure who's doing replays. Ernie Mangoni. Ernie was doing it. Thank you, Ernie. And again, all our camera crew, great job tonight, especially the end zone shots. I loved it. It was great. It was made my job easier to call. That's what we're here for, Jan. Make your <laughs> job easier. <laughs> oh, Amanda's gathering our players of the game. And we're going to include a lineman in that because they played great defense here tonight. So when Amanda's set with the plaque, we'll go down to Mackay and Ian. And Amanda, our, our allied, allied services, our players of the game, brought to you by Army National Guard. I apologize. Go ahead, Amanda. That's right. I've got our Army National Guard players of the game. Joining me now, I've got both of them. Talk to me how special tonight was. Your first game at your new stadium. You have a new piece of hardware to take home and to put in that trophy case. Uh, it, it feels very special. Uh, you know, we've been waiting to have our own f home field for a very long time, going from Valley West to um, playing for Myers. And now seeing that we have our own home field, it was a packed crowd. It just feels great to come out and get a uh, win in our home opener. Ian, what were your expectations coming into tonight? I was expecting to win the whole time, but the crowd, great. It was great. The, the whole environment, I loved it. The whole game was amazing. What would you say about your team? How would you best describe this win? Uh, Great. That's all I can say. You feel me? We all put in the hard work that we had to put in. You feel me? We had a great, uh, great week of practice, great, great off season. We all came together more. So I just feel like it was great coming out and getting a win. Congratulations, guys. Good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you. Bob, Jan, back to you. Thanks. Congratulations to the Wolf Pack, and also thank you to Mark Watson and his team for helping us out. Uh, both teams got something to build on now. Absolutely. One came out with a win, one with a loss, but they're both young, and they're both on their way up. Now, I believe, I'm not sure if Del Val and uh, Wall and Paul Pack, if that's quite a rivalry yet, uh, but you know what? It's going to be after next week because they're going to have to get after it, and both these teams are just eager to just show how good they can be. Wall and Paul Pack has got huge order trying to throttle down that Hazleton offense that has been just tacking points on every opponent they have. Okay, that will do it this week. For Friday Night Riles, brought to you by Allied Services and Tom Hesser Dealerships. Thank you to all the sponsors. Great job by our crew tonight. We talked about them already. Great job by the team here uh, on the field, as well as the administration. So, great night here in Plains as the Wolfpack win their opening game at their brand new stadium. For Amanda, Jan, this is Bob Ide saying, we'll see you next week in Loyal Sox.
You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Tom Hesser Dealerships on MyTV WQMY.